Well, welcome back. I uh, hate to undersell this tutorial, but it will be a little bit more of the same as what we did last time, except that instead of creating a poll, we'll allow a user to join a poll that was previously created. However, we're also going to add a little bit of something called derived state to our Valtio state, so stick around if you want to see something new. And as always, you can go to the repository for this course, which has a whopping one more star now, and uh, follow the instructions to get started. And you can check out or to get the branch from the last tutorial, which was 18 create poll, and this one will be 19 join poll. So in our application, we currently have the ability to create a new poll, and we can enter a poll topic, which I've been using just why. And you enter a name and you can create the poll. And so this will take you to a waiting room, which is going to be a big component that we'll create later. Now I have no way to go back here, but what we're going to do now is add the join existing poll today. And so we'll add a little bit of a form and we'll submit a request to API to provide the poll ID or number and the new user's name to join that poll. I already scaffolded out that join component, so let's open it here. And so the first thing we'll need to do is refactor this with a return for the JSX here so that we can then put in some use state up here. So we're going to add state to accept the form fields. And so that will be the poll ID and then a setter for that and the user's name. So these will be the two form fields added. And then we're going to also be able to set a little local API error based on if there's an error when they try to join the poll or reach out to the server and join the poll. Of course, we got to import use state, add a little space, and then format that baby. Beneath this, we're just going to add a little validator called our fields valid. And these are validators that will match our backend logic. So the poll ID has to be exactly six characters. So if it's less than six or greater than six, then it's invalid. And so then we won't let them click the button to submit. And if their name is zero characters or more than 25, we'll also sort of gray out the join poll button. Otherwise, things are valid. So the next thing we're going to do is kind of replace everything inside of this outer div. I guess this outer div with our sort of input fields. But before I do that, I just want to add a simple handler for when we click the join poll button that will just log join poll for now and we'll add the logic to reach out to the server later. So let's just remove this h3 tag and replace it with a lot. Okay, so we have a div which will have a margin bottom of 12 and let's format all this. And then in that we have another div with a vertical margin of 4. And so the first field will have a little header that says enter code provided by your friend in quotes, you know, it might be your enemy. And then we'll have the input to set the or define or enter the code of a previously created game. So what ends up happening is the first person creates a poll, they get an ID and eventually they'll be able to copy and paste it to maybe like text it to you or send you that code and you join it by entering it in this input. Now, interestingly, notice that this has the auto capitalized feature. So the user only is really able to enter capital letters here. And then we add a style transform as well to make sure that the text is all uppercase. And then when they change anything, we set the poll ID to the uppercase version of whatever they enter. So we cover all our uppercase in many ways. Next, we add another little div with a vertical margin of four. They can enter their name with this header, and then we use the set name to set their name. If there's any API error when they fetch, then we'll put a little red text here with the actual content of that API error, and we'll set the API error in the handle join poll method. Beneath this, we have another vertical margin div that's a flex column and this is first going to have a button for joining the poll and if the fields are not valid it will be disabled if it is enabled and they can click on it it will call that dummy hand join poll method we've created which we'll implement in a bit if the user wants to start over 
it will call that action from our states start over method. So we need to import this from state. And as a reminder, if we go to state and scroll down, start over just calls the actions set page to take us back to the welcome page. And eventually we'll also like clear out any possible pull state here and do some more stuff. So let's just see how this works. So let's join a poll and we don't actually have a real code now, but let's just enter six characters and then a name. And once we have a valid code and name, the join button shows up and we click it and it says join poll. Also, uh, I didn't show, but you can click the start over button here. And it'll go back to the welcome page. Let's now implement the handle join poll and let's close this terminal to give us a little more space. So I'm just going to replace this with a big blob of code. So what does handle join poll do? It calls our start loading action. And if you remember in our state, that kind of sets an is loading state that we have access to in the app TSX, where if there's loading, we kind of show this loader on top of all of our pages, which is kind of like our router in this case. And then we're going to clear any API error, which is just a string as far as this component is concerned. And we'll use that make request utility we defined last time, which returns a data if successful and an error if there's any error. And then this little brackets here just is a type of the response of make request in the case of success. So our data payload will have a poll and an access token. And so the poll is actually in a shared type, which is in a shared folder here. We're using NPM workspaces and the poll is shared between the client and server. And it will also have an access token, which will define the user. And that's what the user will send to connect via web sockets and it kind of tells the server what poll the particular participant or user belongs to we're posting to the polls join endpoint and the post here with the poll id and the name if there are any errors we set an api error if it's a 400 we'll just assume and it's probably correct that it is an or a validation error if it's unknown we'll set unknown and then if everything is successful, we'll initialize the poll with the poll data and we'll set the access token and then we'll send the user to that waiting room page. But we need to import app page, which is an enum in the state. It's just kind of a list of our various pages. And then when all is said and done, whether there's an error or it's successful, we will set the loading state to false. So let's demo this really quick. And this one, I've increased the font size, so it's a little bigger. I use three browsers just because we're going to end up actually like storing data in local storage. And so it's easier to like duplicate or mimic different users with different browser windows. But maybe you know a better way to do that. If so, go ahead and leave a comment. So we'll create a poll with this person and we'll say why. And this will be Jacob. And heck, let's say uh, two votes per participant and they create the poll. Now, I need to probably go into the dev tools of this to get the ID of the poll. Let's maybe mount this underneath for now. And I actually console log what the poll ID is. And so here it is, L1N239. And later, we'll actually show this ID in the waiting room so you can copy and paste it to the other users. But for now, we'll join, and this will be uh, Sammy. And then join existing poll, Renee. With two E or one E, I don't know. And actually, this is the code. Sorry, I do that a lot. And Renee. Give him a little accent. Renee. All right, join. Cool, so they're able to join the poll, and that's a demo of how it works. Since what we did today was kind of repetitive and similar to what we did last time, I think this gives us a little bit of time to add one more little feature. So the first thing I want to do is add some derived state to our app. And so if we go to Valtio, 
we can find here an example of using derived state. And this is the derived util here. And so what you can do is sort of create this derived function, which will return new state. And the first object, you can put fields that have this getter function. And so you can get the current snapshot of the state and then derive some new state from that. Then in the second object, you will define the proxy of the original state. So you kind of merge the regular state or proxy state and some derived state. Now, what we want to use this for is to derive the current user and then some state that says if they're the actual admin of the poll. So let's go to our state. And then beneath the state, we're going to add some proxy state. Or sorry, some derived state. So here it is, and we'll import derive from Valtio Utils. And we'll add the derived state in this first object. And then we need to actually export this state, which has some derived state added to it. So what we're going to do is export derived state. Or sorry, I think I called it state with computed as state. So the actual state we're exporting is the state with computed or derived properties. So the first thing I want to add here is a piece of state called me which will give us the user's ID and name. So me has a little getter and it will get the access token from the state. Remember, we fetch that when we create or join a poll. It's a part of our state that we set. If there's no access token, we'll do nothing. Otherwise, we're going to actually get the payload or we're going to convert the base 64 payload of the token into a JSON object or actually, I guess, a JavaScript object. And this is a utility function, which we'll go take a look at, but let's import it first. And then we'll return that tokens sub field and sub is a standard JWT field where you should store IDs. And then the user's name is stored as an optional parameter on that, or I guess maybe a non standard token claim, I guess is the vernacular. Let's look at this get token payload. Now you can see that there's actually a little bit of a deprecation warning here. And I think that's because node APIs don't support this A to B for kind of converting base 64 into strings. So what we're doing, or sorry, the other way around. So we're getting this string. So an access token or a JWT has three parts. It's got like a header. It's got the main body with the data, and then it's got like a signature. So we get the second part of that if we split on the periods. So the sections of the JWT are separated by periods. And so then we do take that and we try to convert it into basically JSON. So first we convert it from base64 to a regular string, and then we parse that as JSON. Or we parse that from JSON, I should say, to a JavaScript object. Whew, that's a mouthful. Now, this is really probably just something to do this error with my TypeScript settings. So there's probably a way to tell our TypeScript config that we're in the browser and not to use this. Because when you're using Node, you should use this buffer dot from string and then tell it it's base64. An easy way around this then is just to use the window. And that would get rid of the deprecation warning if you don't like it. Let's add one more little is admin feature then. And we'll put that or field, I should say, we'll put that beneath me. And basically it's going to get the state dot me. So it's kind of a derived state on derived state. And if that ID equals the polls admin ID or the ID of the person who created the poll, then we know this person is the admin. Now this me is not a part of our app state. So we need to add that field. And working with app state or TypeScript and derived state is a little funny, but in our app, we're able to kind of work around it. And we'll just do that now by adding me to this app state. And it's optional because it's initially undefined. And it will be of type, not media capabilities, me. Me is not defined yet. I am not defined yet. Don't define me. Okay, so me is now defined. And so let's take a look at this in our dev tools. 
let's open Redux here because remember we can use Redux tools with Valtio. Looks like it's already showing is admin is true, probably because I don't reset the state right now, but we'll add that functionality later. And this is actually probably a bug, maybe because they're both undefined as of now. So this person is the admin. So maybe let's fix that actually. <laughs> But now you see that we have me, and of course this person is admin. And we also see the user's ID. So let's try to fix that is admin being true if we like do a full refresh of the app. So if we go into me and is admin, let's just sort of replace is admin here with a new function. And what it will say is if we get the state dot me, or if there is no me, then obviously they're not the admin. So we can't determine if they're the admin until there is a me derived state. So let's hard refresh and is admin is false. And then let's make sure that when they create the poll, they'll become the admin. Is admin is true. And there's the me object. Okay, so let's just do one more little thing that I promise is it for today, but it will help us be ready for the next tutorials. And that is to subscribe to a piece of state change and then act accordingly. And what we're going to do is subscribe to changes in state.access token. So if we get an access token, I want to store that in local storage. But if the access token then becomes null or undefined, then we'll remove the access token from local storage. And that's so when we want to reset the poll, a feature we've yet to add, we can clear the access token from local storage. To do that, we're just going to add a subscribe key, which is a method or function provided by Valtio utils, kind of like that derive function we just created. And so we say to access the access token key, and I'll say if there is an access token and a poll, then set the access token to the state's access token. Otherwise, remove any entry in local storage for access token. So we still don't have the ability to like properly reset our app, so I've hard refreshed. Let's create a poll. And if I create, we should see we have an access token here, but more importantly, we should be able to go to our application and go to local storage and see for localhost 8080, that's this domain, that we have the user's access token there. So anywho, that's all for today. Now that a user can create or join a poll, we're ready to actually connect them with their token and make them a participant of a poll via WebSockets. So next time we'll handle connecting them to a particular room corresponding to the poll. And that's going to be really new and exciting. So hope to see you then.